so this is my Ironton air compressor that I got from Northern Tool. It lasted, yeah, I don't know, I may have had this thing for over a year and a half now, but it probably lasted nine months, I'm going to estimate. I probably used it twice. Uh, and it had catastrophic failure. I haven't looked into it, it, what's going on inside here yet, but wheeled it in here, kind of pushed it in further with old Grizzly here and it fell over, but broke the wonderful plastic shroud here, but that's going to be garbage anyway. So I'm going to take this apart and see what's going on in there. The motor runs. Well, hell, let's just plug it in. I probably should have safety gear on. <laughs> It sounded like it blew up when I was there, and it blew up. <laughs> well, let's go. It looks bad, really bad. So this is an oilless compressor, which I'm coming to find is the biggest scam in the freaking world. So you can see we got a piston and a connecting rod down there. That was probably a fan at one time. Where are all the blades? Oh, <laughs> they're all piled along the side over here. Oh, there's part of the connecting rod. Neat. So, that's a pretty big motor. Piece of plastic wedged in there. on that so what can I do with this thing ah look at that freaking garbage man junk all right i want to oh, i wish there was let me take this off i want to see what's going on in, underneath that all right so there's a sealed bearing on there it's not very free it don't feel bad so i'm thinking that well i don't i don't know I'm thinking that piston failed and then it cracked the, the rod off. I don't know. But I, what I want to know is if I can use this motor with a pulley on it. It's probably pressed on there. Let's see if I can get that off of there somehow. All right, so I have this old battery, battery cable uh, puller that I had laying around. I used that to take off the bearing after I got that clip off. And now, now we're going to see if it'll do this. I don't know if you can see this wonderfulness I got going on here. I'm going to see if this works. One eternity later. All right. Well, the uh, air compressor kind of escalated. <laughs> you can see that the motor now is missing a large chunk of uselessness on there. I hacked all that off. I got the uh, crank off of there. Uh, as you'll see in a little bit, um, there was no using a puller to get that off. So I used a grinder 
I tried to uh, give myself a place for a set screw here by cutting it strategically. Strategically. Uh, but as I found out, that measures, what did I write down? 0. 0.6730 about. And I was able to find this at Fleet Farm. This is a 5 ace hub, and this is all out of the farm implement section. So you, you buy a hub, and then you can get a sprocket or a pulley or whatever that fits on there, and you have to weld it. So lucky me, I have a welder now. And I picked up two belts, and... Um, I basically get to pick my own size. I kind of measured with a tape measure about where I want it to be. And I figured about 24 inches. And this is 30.4, half inch wide, which is, here's my compressor. I don't know how old this baby is, but we're going to try it. And it fits right in there. So... Main reason I picked this one, this is for a Snapper, or Murray, whatever. Um, but it was on clearance. I got two for $650, $325 each. I figured I'd get a spare right away. So, plan is to put the pump on top of here. Um... Got these mounting flanges here, I'll reuse that. Put angle iron between there and come up with a frame across to bolt the, the pump on. And I think I'm gonna use threaded rod as a mount, so it'll be like jack screws to do the belt tension. Um, as simple as it can get. I have this piece of angle that I'd like to use, use that up. Probably had that laying around forever. But 5A shaft is a lot smaller, or hub is a lot smaller than this. So 625 versus 6730. So we're going to have to make this thing into its own mini lathe and kind of buff that thing down. All right, well, if I would have known I was going to try to use this motor, I went to cut the wires. But so now we, we should figure out which of these colored wires here is the hot wire. So I have this lead plugged into that prong, which is the hot on an outlet. So we're going to check with the multimeter in continuity mode. So the blue wire has nada, nothing, and the brown has 11, 11 ohms. That seems kind of high, but um, is made in China, so I'll confirm that the, oh, get in there. Now the switch is off. Now we have nada. Switch on. Ah, see? Down to five. Look at that. There we go, about 0.3 is what I get just by crossing the leads together. Yeah, so, what is this thing made? I can't tell. Oh well. <clears throat> okay. 
think we have something good enough now. Um, when I was turning down the shaft with a, f I started with a file, and the file kind of took a beating. Um, and then I don't recommend any of this. <laughs> I used an old cutoff or grinder wheel and was like holding it against there. Now the problem is since I put that that flat spot on there thinking that would be for the, the set screw. When you take a file or whatever and hold it against that round part, when it hits that that flat spot, it digs in more to the the round on the on the incoming side, oh, sorry. Say if the set screws or that flat spot's here, it'll dig in more on this this portion of the round and less over here. And you get kind of a oscillation and it becomes an egg shape. So it was kind of screwed. Like I ended up trying sandpaper real lightly to try to round off the the oblong portion but still it wasn't quite going on smooth and when he did get it on it flopped back and forth so I just I just beat it on <laughs> and uh, kept tapping it till it was kind of straight it kind of has still a bit of a wobble wobble to it but you know this thing gets one more chance at life and then it gets thrown in the junk so <laughs> Uh, I just freaking welded the whole thing right onto the shaft. Um, well, I didn't tighten that screw yet, but we'll do that for the hell of it. But otherwise, it looks pretty good when it's running. Not totally bolted down, so it rattles a lot. But... Then I realized that this turns the opposite direction of the pump. So the pump has to go here and the pulleys go between the two which kind of blows so gonna make things more difficult oh, not winning very much lately but okay i did a kind of really hokey mock-up here of where that might be and i thought hey let's try to put the belt on but oh yeah that's nowhere near a 30 inch belt doesn't even go around this pulley. Nice. So, but anyway, I think the motor will have to shift over a little bit, get the belt. Probably, ah, man, I'm gonna have to make a guard for that. Just get the belt around this area. Then the, the outlet comes out here, so it'll have to be a tube all the way around. Whatever. <clears throat> all right. It's a new day at uh, Fire Pinto's Northern Outpost here. As you can see, it's kind of a winter wonderland. And I hate it. I don't like winter anymore. So, got some work done on the old uh, Franken presser. I didn't get any video of welding this up, but I was on a roll. Don't look at the welds. And don't say they're bad, because they are bad. <laughs> I know that. Uh, but it's working. Um, Need a wider lens here. The uh, last thing that, oh, note to yourself and myself, brake clean and Ironton presser paint. Yep, knock that over. Do not work together. 
it takes the paint off as you can see on my rag so what was I saying last thing I need to do is the two front screws need a hole drilled through the tube and the red base plate on each side but first this pulley is not quite on all the way I don't believe um, can I turn the light on no anyway you can kind of see the keyway stick it out a little bit so we're gonna try to push that on farther before I set where that hole's gonna go I have a slot in the back so it could move a little bit but this motor did not have a lot of torque which I think will be fine for running it but as you can see it'll probably do it now oh. it actually took off pretty good sometimes it'll sit there and just like and then it'll start going oh, my clamp is going to fall off so it puts out a good amount of air too. Make sure that stays on there. Um, so I don't know. What do you think? You might. It might. Um, will it outperform the little? Little crappy piston that was in there with the little crappy cylinder that was on there with the what is that an inch and a half inch and a quarter inch stroke with no oil junk I think it might. I put some old 1040 I had in there. Uh, I think to run it for a while and then drain it out right here. Flush it out. I don't know if there's supposed to be a special compressor oil. Probably. but I don't think Frank Compressor cares. Alright. I'm going to work on that pulley. Okay. So I got the bracket and the pump off. We're gonna take and hit that with the flapper wheel and clean it up a little bit. Maybe spray bomb it a little bit of red. Um, forgot to mention before, I added this uh, nipple in here with the 90 and repositioned, I think it's like a check valve or something. I'm not a pneumatics expert, but uh, Hopefully I didn't mess it up too much with the wrench. I see the threads are a little bunged up right there, but it's made out of aluminum. Cheap Chinese crap. So I got the tube router up into there. Even that was like, I think cross-threaded from the factory. Unless I did it somehow, but I think I got it in right. So let's get this thing all shiny. Okay, got that all ground up. Sprayed her down with some brake clean. Kind of a puddle on my plastic bag over there yet, so I'll have to wipe that up before I paint. But I've had this coil of copper laying around for God knows how long. So I think we're going to use that to redo the line going in the tank. Now, before they had this wonderful Chinese aluminum that was actually I don't know if it was this end or the other one but it was like ready to be pinched off <clears throat> and it was loose so I'm gonna have to find my 
double flare kit that I just bought for doing brakes and see if I can use that on here. It'll be an improvement, I think. Oh, and also, I saved all the, the ends, but also saved this cooling thing. Looks like it's galvanized steel. I don't know. Not the most heat conductive thing, but I think we'll slip that on there if we can. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Just like a glove. Alright. Paint is over on the pellet stove, warming up. It's still... What is it? 25 degrees? The, um, let me zoom back out here. Come on, phone. <clears throat> I have my old house thermostat in here, and it doesn't even read how low that is. I'm gonna have to swap that thing out. It, uh, one day I came in here, it was like single digits, and it was stuck at 82 degrees, so it wasn't heating. So that doesn't do me any good. I actually had to take it off the wall and put it in front of the pellet stove and warm it up for it to work. Which is, yeah, sometimes old school is better. Just like, just like old Pumpy back there, it's better. All right, well, I was just spray painting and I heard the pellet stove wind down, like it calling for no heat. And that's 82 degrees in here. And it's not heating. In actuality, that's 25 yet. What a piece of junk. Ah, well, we're going to have to hotwire it. All right, well, I said in the intro, we're going to try to get it done today. Christmas Day, but Sharky's looking at me like I'm crazy. He's like, why are we out here? And I can't feel my fingers, so we got the motor mostly on. I can't get the nut on down there with my frozen fingers. So, the pump is on, clamped down tight with the adjusting studs, belt is snug, but we gotta put the copper coil on for the feed line. And I am not interested in trying to do that with frozen fingers, but we have it plugged in. Let's see how she fires up. Now, I tried to fire this up the first time before, and it was like snubbed out. So let's see what happens. Yeah, it's about the same. Come on, girl. Just so cold out here. Quiet dog. Come on, it's gaining steam. A full chooch pretty soon. Stay on fire. Now get your nose out of there, thank you. There it goes. Oh, 
Oh, it wobbles a little bit. They keep saying it's going to get up into the 40s up here in Wisconsin. And I don't know, this week or whatever, but I believe it when I see it. I think we'll be holding off till then. So, sorry about what I said in the uh, intro, but just ain't going to do it. Hands are cold. Alright, so we have the compressor all done. I think I've decided to name it Pitter patter instead of Frank compressor. Uh, mainly because that's how it sounds. Seems to draw a little more current probably than it originally did. And it makes my LED light flicker like that. But it does put out some good air. Oh, I'll put it on. So I had trouble with this this pipe leaking here. Um, I think my copper tubing is probably a hair too small. I don't know if I could fit a half inch in there or not, but this is three A's. And to me, that's what was on there. It was even aluminum. But I tried doing a double flare end, which didn't quite seem to flare it out enough. I tweaked it a little more with a single flare unit. Clamped it down. It seems to be okay now. But I just need a compressor that works. And this is good enough. Nothing fancy. A little pitter patter. So eventually I'll have to make a guard. This motor gets pretty hot. I think that's why it originally failed, because <laughs> I never saw the fan when it was intact, but a little bitty fan in there, cooling that thing. All the heat rose up into the compressor. Pretty sure that blew that up. It's all junk. So, word to the wise, don't buy oilless compressors. They're dumb. They're just dumb so I think that's going to wrap up this video the old uh, pitter patter i come up with a guard someday and I need to make a wider front foot because that one 
little peg leg in the front and with this being so top heavy she likes to come down so might happen might not I got a lot of other things I want to do like that and that and that and that and way out there and way out there <laughs> got a lot of shit to do well I think the motor now has died on my air compressor it's probably been overworked um, but I do notice or did notice when I was cleaning the pulley just running the motor with a file or cleaning the shaft to put the pulley on I mean the motor gets really hot so I think that was part of the reason it failed the first time and I've been smelling warm wires and it just died without filling the tank I don't believe it triggered the switch in here I think it's just done it feels pretty warm is great there's a thing with me and air compressors I just can't own an air compressor well I just came in and plugged in the air compressor again and turned it on and it went so I think the motor has some kind of overload heat protection in it um, so we might have to come up with a, a safety shroud here sooner than later um, just so I can take advantage of this fan on here have that suck some air up through the motor uh, we're gonna be getting hot air on here but I think what I'm gonna do is mock one up with cardboard a little CAD Cardboard aided drafting. Have it come up on each side like that. And then I don't know if I can. I'd like to have it curve with the pulley. That might not be uh, advisable with the uh, cardboard, but <clears throat> if I come up around. Have the back side blocked off. Try to get one between here and the belt and pulleys so that all the air is sucking up over the motor and coming through the base here. That's where the air inlet would be through the bottom of the motor. I think that would work. So, we got the uh, air compressor fixed up once again. Had more trouble with the piping. Had to get new fittings. The original crap that was on the compressor seemed to be half-inch flare fittings with a 3 ace tube. So, it kept coming apart. And actually, the the cap was not chamfered on the inside, so it was like just biting into the flare on the tubing and cutting it off. So, had to go to Fleet Farm, find new fittings, had to get a new check valve, because I couldn't get a 3 ace fitting to go on the old one. Not sure why there's oil coming out of there. I know the, the pump is leaking so they did the right thing and just stuff rags everywhere uh so 
It's probably coming out of the actual tube. But we had to get this new fitting for that. It's just been fun. Got some tie wraps holding the fill cover in. Got my muffler on. And it works. supposed to shut off by now <laughs> oh, shoot. Uh, huh. I wonder if there's a problem with this fitting here I think that's just a bleed off though I think it should get its pressure reading from here well now it's not on Oh my god. This thing is gonna be the death of me. <laughs> Why? Why aren't you shutting off? Let's see on here. Max volt 240, amp 20, max bar 12 psi 175. So I bet it don't turn back on now. <laughs> 